A very good evening to all. It's time for children's bedtime treasury with Let Emotion Speak. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, comment below how did you like the story and subscribe to my channel for more bedtime stories. Today's story is about the missing scarf. Kanga was very proud of a strippy knitted scarf. She had made it herself and she had also made a smaller matching one for her son Joey. Kanga used to hop through the bush with her scarf streaming out behind her while Joey could just be seen poking out of the top of her pouch. Now Joey was older. He was too big for Kanga's pouch, but he still wore his scarf as he hopped along beside his mother. Then one day Kanga woke up to find that a beautiful scarf was missing. She searched high and low, but it was nowhere to be found. Eventually, she decided that she would have to go out into the bush to look for it. "Stay here, Joey. I'll be back," she said to Joey. "I'll try not to be long. I'm sure to find my scarf soon." Kanga hopped off into the bush and started to search among the roots of trees and under stones. She had gone quite a long way when, looking up into the branches of a eucalyptus tree, she spotted a koala. Now, koala was usually to be found asleep, but this time she was busy preparing a meal of eucalyptus leaves for her children. Kanga looked up at koala. Then her jaw dropped, for Koala was quite clearly wearing Kanga's scarf around her tummy. Then, to Kanga's horror, she saw Koala use the end of the scarf to wipe the teacups. Koala, Kanga called, "What are you doing?" Koala stopped cleaning the teacups and looked down through the branches of the eucalyptus tree at Kanga. "I'm wiping my teacups with my apron." she replied sleepily and i'll thank you not to interfere with that she yawned and moved several branches further up the tree poor kanga felt very embarrassed how could she have mistaken koala's striped apron for her own scarf she hopped away and carried on further into the bush after a while she could hear kookaburra's familiar laughing call nearby I know thought Kanga I ask her if she's seen my scarf she'd be able to spot it easily from up in the sky she followed the sound of kookaburra's call until she came to the tree where she lived she looked up and sure enough there was kookaburra flying towards the tree kanga was about to call up when her jaw dropped again for kookaburra was quite clearly carrying kanga's scarf in her beak Kokobura Kanga called Whatever do you think you were doing I'm lining my nest mumbled Kokobura through a beak full of stripy feathers and I'll thank you not to interfere she added more distinctly for she had now reached the nest and was arranging the feathers carefully in place Poor Kanga felt even more embarrassed how could she have mistaken the feathers for her own scarf She hopped away and carried on further into the bush. After a while, she reached a wide open plain and there she saw Emu running past with his baby chicks on his back. As he rushed past, Kanga's jaw dropped yet again, for Emu quite clearly had Kanga's scarf tucked in among his chicks. Emu called Kanga, "What the hell do you think you were doing? I'm taking my chicks to safety." said emu glancing up at the sky as he sped away and you would be wise to do the same he added then kanga realized that what she had thought was her rolled up scarf was just the striped chicks on emu's back poor kanga felt even more embarrassed how could she have made such a mistake then she felt a few spots of rain on her nose and looking up she saw a huge black cloud overhead there was no time to lose 
she must find shelter. She made a dash for some trees at the edge of the plain and soon found herself by a stream. She wandered along beside the stream feeling cold, wet, tired and miserable. Finally, she lay down in the wet grass beside the stream and tried to get to sleep. She shivered with cold and wondered how Joey was and whether he was behaving himself. She so hoped he hadn't got into mischief. Just then there was a tap on her shoulder and there stood Platypus. I could hear you in my burrow over there, she said, pointing towards a hole beside the stream just above the water. I thought you might like this to keep you warm, she added. My scarf, exclaimed Kanga. Oh, is that what it is? I'm ever so sorry, said Platypus. I have been using it as a blanket for my babies. It's rather cold and damp in my burrow, you know, she added rather forlornly. Where did you find it? asked Kanga. It was stuck on some thorns and I know I shouldn't have taken it, but I just thought it would be so nice for keeping my young ones warm, blurted Platypus and she started to sob. There now, said Kanga, don't cry. You can keep the scarf. You need it more than me. Platypus stopped crying and looked overjoyed. Thank you, she said. No, thank you, said Kanga. I've learned a lesson, which is not to get upset over a scarf, for I've ended up falling out with my friends. Kanga made her way back home, but it took a long time because she apologized to all her friends on the way. When she explained what had happened, Emu, Kokabura and Koala all forgave her and by the time she reached home, she was feeling much better. Joy was there to greet her. What have you been up to while I was away? She asked. I made you this, he said. He handed her a scarf. It was a very funny looking scarf made out of twigs, grass and feathers. But Kanga loved it very much. This is much more special than my old scarf, she said. And she gave Joy an extra big hug. Wasn't it one interesting story? It told us just not about the scarf, but about all the amazing animals found in Australia. The kangaroo, the kookaburu, the emu, the koala bear and the platypus. Did you know that a baby kangaroo is called Joey? And just like a kangaroo, a platypus is also a marsupial. It has a pocket to keep its babies. It's time to say goodbye and good night.